Out of your bed, out of your, out of your shampoo, out of your, out of your rivers of living water, out of your, out of your oh yeah, living water. Welcome to the Men of Integrity, men that rescue men and women. Again, I need to remind you that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Call a neighbor, call a friend, and tell them that the Men of Integrity is on the air, and there is a word concerning you and your family. Our co-host, Apostle J. Edward Fisher, Pastor, Saint Center, Coppers Cove, and Colleen. Well, God is a, is a good God as always. Praise the name of the Lord. and. Um, uh, the Bible says, why well, says here that God is, is so good that He uses His goodness to bring us to repentance. Absolutely, and repentance is necessary. <laughs> Amen. Not sorrow of heart, glory to God, not disappointed because it was revealed. Amen. But repentance towards God because we have recognized that we have offended the Most High God. All right. And when you, the Bible said, he that is just and faithful to act, God is just and faithful to forgive. Yeah, and you know, the Apostle Paul was talking, he said, godly sorrow worketh repentance unto salvation. Yes, that's sir. The, that's the whole idea is to be saved. <laughs> it's, it's to be saved. Mm -hmm. Amen. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Tonight, we want you to take a look at Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 18. The record here says, God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. Tonight, we want to encourage you and remind you that the church has power. Mm -hmm. It does not matter what other forces come against the church. The church has power. Then you may ask, what is the church? It's the born again believer. It's the believer that has repented of their sins, been baptized in the name Lord Jesus Christ, and been filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, and now stand in the divine power thereof. The church has the keys to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. The record says, whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Behold, I give you the keys of the kingdom. That's the power that God has authorized the believer. And so tonight we want to say to you, be encouraged because you, as a born again believer, have power. Oh yeah, praise the name of the Lord. And my sister, and this power from on high is power with God too. Uh, 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 as we add to them, of course, it is the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So there's a couple of things I want you to wrap your mind around. And the first thing is that I need you to understand that you have to embrace the promise of God. Mm. God cannot lie. Mm -hmm. What he has spoken concerning you and your family is factual and it is true. <laughs> And Satan wants you to abort all of your inheritance by fear mm -hmm. because it doesn't look like it's going to work out. It doesn't feel like it's going to work out. But God does not lie. He does not change. The second thing I want you to wrap your mind around is this. You have to learn how to use the power. Acts 1 and 8. Mm -hmm. You shall receive what? Power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, we can't really be a witness unto Jesus without the power because if we're going to act like Jesus, well, we have to have the same power he had. And that's why I was so emphatic that we get the Holy Ghost so that we could be people of power. Absolutely. In this dark, generation mm -hmm. in this time of chaos come on now the church is supposed to witness the glory and the power of the most high god thank you the church has to embrace the power and here's what the power look like isaiah 11 and 2 
and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, and the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of God. This is what should be operating in the born again believer. You should not be operating by guessing. You should understand the times and the season, and you should know what needs to be done in this season. That's if you are spiritually connected to the Holy Ghost. The other thing that I want you to wrap your mind around as we jump into this lesson is you have to stay in a place of peace. Philippians 4 and 7, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So listen at those things again. You have to stay in the place of peace. You have to learn to use the power and you must understand and embrace the promise. Apostle, the church has power. Oh yeah, the church definitely uh, has power and um, the church um, can walk in peace and grace. And here's the thing about it. Peter was telling us, say it can be multiplied. Yes. <laughs> uh, the Bible says in 2 Peter uh, 1, verse 2, it says, Grace and peace yes. be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So then, uh, so then in uh, Hosea 6 and 6, it says, God, watch this here, desire that we have knowledge because, I mean, and, and spiritual knowledge brings about, why well, this here, more grace, more peace, and spiritual knowledge brings about more strength. <laughs> Amen. Glory <laughs> to God. You're right. You know, I was thinking about a little cartoon I used to watch when I was coming up as a kid. <laughs> it was called Underdog. All right. And he says, there's no need to fear because underdog is here, you know? <laughs> and I want to translate that and tell you that there is no need to fear. That's right. God is here. The scripture have told us that God is here. Mm -hmm. And because God is here, glory to God, he will protect us. He will provide for us and we will have the peace and the prosperity of God. When you stop and you think about Acts chapter 12, apostle, it gives reference to Peter being locked in prison. Hmm. And the record begins to describe that Heron had the power to bind Peter between two soldiers and lock him in an inner prison. Mm -hmm. But the church <laughs> had the power to pray. The church prayed for Peter. Mm -hmm. And if the church goes back to what God has given her and operate in the power of God, there is nothing that cannot be done. Second Corinthians 10, four and five. Here is your proof of record. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, Come on now. but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds casting down arguments or imaginations and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of God. When your mind tells you that it cannot be done, amen. When the situation dictates to you that it is dire, glory to God, when it looks hopeless and you want to tumble into oppression and depression, mm. you have to embrace the promise of God when he says that all things are possible to him that believe. That's the power of the church. Mm -hmm. Our belief causes the power of God to change the situation. Yeah. And then, you know, God's ears is open. Praise the name of the Lord to the righteous. So it's open all, and God is just waiting for us and we just need to pray. Uh, yes. Paul was talking to Timothy, he said, cease not to pray. Yes. Praise the name yes. of the Lord. Um, James said, the prayer of the righteous <laughs> avail it much. Praise the name of the Lord. And then when we look at the apostle Paul, praise the name of the Lord. And, and God was talking to Ananias and, he, and Ananias was telling God, I said, you know this man here? And God said, he's praying now. So praying, watch this here, takes it all from you and then puts you in the hand of God. You're so absolutely <laughs> right. Tonight, if you are born again believer, mm -hmm. embrace the fact 
that if you go to God in prayer mm -hmm. and seek his face diligently, you're going to have a move of God because that is the power of the believer. That's right. If you are not a born again believer, and you're being oppressed, bound, and confused by a whole bunch of deceptive things, then get the power of God mm -hmm. because it is the power of the church. You hear it so often quoted, it says that no weapon formed against us will prosper and every tongue that rises in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the inheritance of the saints of mm -hmm. God. You hear Jeremiah 29, 11 all the time. I know the thoughts I have towards you, thoughts of good and not of evil to bring unto you an expected end. All of this is done by the power of the living God. It is the power of faith that has been given to the believer that they earnestly pray. Glory to God. They pray not because they have a reluctant God, but we pray because we are praying that thy kingdom come, thy will be done in our life as it is in heaven. It demonstrates the passion and love that God has for his people. Yeah, and, and Jesus was giving us, uh, uh, in other words, the power of prayer by he, uh, he gave us about the parable in the Luke 18. He said, man ought to always pray and not faint. Praise the name of the Lord. He, he, he gave us a, a story about this widow. She kept going to this judge and, and wearing him down. He said, but you really don't have to do God that way. Praise right. the name of the Lord. God will speedily uh, answer his people. Praise the name. And so we, we, we got to pray, cease not to pray. And Jesus said, watch this here. He was, he was telling them as he was demonstrating prayer in the garden, he said, um, uh, he said watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. And then the disciples understood Jesus. They watched him. They saw his power and everything, but they were impressed with his prayer life. Absolutely. And he, they said, teach us to pray like John taught his disciples. <laughs> Absolutely. Because it is that intimate moment of prayer mm -hmm. that brings forth the power of the living God. When you pray, you get wisdom and understanding. Come on now. You get counsel and might. Glory to God. You begin to understand how to go in and out before God uh -huh. when you are praying. Now, beloved, here is the key to that power. John 15 and 7. If you abide in me, mm -hmm. you got to stay in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you got to stay in obedience in God's will. Mm -hmm. Look what he said. If you abide in me, and my words Come abide on. in you. Ask what you will. You will ask what you desire, and it shall be done. Mm -hmm. Now that's power. <laughs> if I can pray to God and ask Him according to His will, and it shall be done, that's power, my brother. Yeah, well, you know, the brothers say, just let me get the prayer. Let, I, I know a lot of things are happening. But let me get to prayer. Let me let me call upon the name of the Lord, uh, 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 and it, it will it will be all right. <laughs> <laughs> Constant prayer was offered to God on the behalf of Peter's situation. Mm -hmm. Peter is in prison, and the church prays. If you are bound by some things, whether it be mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, relational, if you can find a prayer warrior, if you can find somebody that can pray, I want the church to pray for me mm -hmm. because the church has faith. And the church has power. And too. the church has power. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, let's 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 take a let's take a look at this real quickly. Ephesians chapter three, mm -hmm. verse fourteen to nineteen. Paul's prayer for increasing strength and fullness. Look what he says. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom the, every family in heaven and on earth is named that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being mm -hmm. so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That's, that's getting into him. <laughs> that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth 
and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Oh, have mercy. Praise the name of God. <laughs> that's a lot. Yeah, that, 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 uh, 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 and that's a lot. And, 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 to, and Paul knew how to pray and get the church in a certain place and, and, and the privilege that they had anyway. We have the privilege, praise the name of the Lord, that God has given us uh, uh, to know about heavenly things. And it says, set your affection on things above and not on things on the earth. Watch this here. Our home is in heaven, but we can learn some things about heaven while we're on earth. <laughs> so absolutely. Four things that Paul brought out in that text. Mm -hmm. He says strength, that they might be strengthened by Christ in dwelling through the spirit. Mm -hmm. This thing is spiritual. Oh yeah. That's why you have to be born again. You have to have the spirit of the living God. Now, I don't have time to all get a point with you, but you're not born with God's spirit. You're born with a spirit, but you're not born with God's spirit. That's why he says, you must be born again. Hmm. And he says, I will pour out my spirit into your spirit. That's what Joel talked about. Mm -hmm. Secondly, he talked about love, that you may be rooted and grounded in love. Mm -hmm. Man, to know the love of God, Come on to now. know the height, the depth, Glory to God of God's love. It's not even understandable, but he wants you to get a taste of how much God loved. And, and it's so far out there, he just say, for God so loved. <laughs> <laughs> Thirdly, he talks about knowledge, that they may know Christ's love in all dimensions. Mm -hmm. And then fourthly, he says, fool. When you get full of the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. you can't put nothing else in there. <laughs> you can't put no doubt in there. You can't put no fear in there. You know, you just can't put nothing else in it when you get full of God's Holy Spirit. And that's how you walk in the ultimate power of God because there's nothing else in there but God because you're so full of God. So you probably see why Jesus was emphatic about the disciples. He said, don't you go anywhere. Don't go running yeah. revivals and everything like that. He said, until you be endued with power from on high. Praise the name of the Lord. And, and well, some brothers left uh, before time, but you can see the difference. But they waited on the Lord, and, they, and the day of Pentecost came, and them brothers was different brothers after that. <laughs> you know, you, you're so right, Apostle, and, and it's so serious of a time now because it appears that the gathering, because I don't want to call it the church, because the church of God has not changed. The power of the church is still as relevant as it was on the day of Pentecost. You know, these signs shall follow them that believe. Mm -hmm. The signs are still there, but the gathering has changed so much. Where you see so much stuff happening in the gathering under the name church. Mm -hmm. But when you go back, glory to God, if the word of God is true, when he says, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The stuff that you see under the name of church that is not authentic and was demonstrated on the day of Pentecost, baby, it's not church. It's the <laughs> gathering. But the church of God still stands strong and people are still being born again in the church. People are still being baptized in the church. People are still being filled with the Holy Ghost and people are still sanctified, consecrated and holy in God's church. Yeah, and, and, and Hebrews tells us to forsake not the assembling of ourselves together as the manner is. We're talking about, we're talking about real church. You know how it was, brother, when we came up. Watch this here. If the spirit didn't move, or we didn't feel the presence of the Lord and everything like that, we didn't, we don't thought we had church. Yes. We had a gathering, but we didn't have church. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, at the end of Paul's prayer, it goes back to the scripture, you know, and I love it so much. But it says, now unto him who is able. Mm -hmm. When you get into the church, you're getting back to the one that's able. 
You're coming back to the one that's able to heal all manner of sickness and disease. Right. You're coming back to the one that is able to deliver from any other power source. You're getting back to the one that's able to provide according to his riches and glory. All right. And you're getting back to the one that's able to protect you. He's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless glory to God. That's what the record says. But he says, now unto him that is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. What's the power working in us? It's the faith of God that causes the impossible to become possible. That's the church. The church is not weak. Glory to God. The church is not failing. Glory to God. The church is standing strong. And that's why he says, I'm coming back for the church mm -hmm. without spot or wrinkle. That says to me that God sustains the church even in this dark hour. That's so right. don't get the gathering mixed up with the church. Don't get, <laughs> hey man, those that are falling away. Yes, they're falling away from truth. They're falling away from the authentic church, but the authentic church still stands. And I'm passionate about the fact that the church is still what God created way back in the day. Yeah, you know what, Bishop, you know, when you're thinking about it, uh, the gathering uh, uh, doesn't uh, put the uh, Jesus as Lord, but in the church, yes. Jesus is the head of the church. Mm. He is Lord. We are the body, and we don't we don't forget him. We don't forget back that, and we're looking to Jesus all the time. In fact, the way we got into the church was confessing Him as Lord, and He must be Lord. Praise the name of the Lord among the saints. Absolutely, and when you worship Him. Mm. The record says in John, you must worship him in spirit and in truth. That spirit which he's talking about is the spirit of the living God. And it's the spirit of truth. It is only what God said. It is only scribed in the word of God. Now watch it. Prayer must be escorted by faith. Mm -hmm. If prayer right. is not escorted by faith, then it will not reach the place where anything happens. Hmm. In James chapter 1, verses 6 to 8, but let him ask in faith, not wavering. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That means that you got to go somewhere and sit down until your faith has been established in God. Hebrews says, he that cometh to God must first believe that God is. Mm -hmm. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He says, for he that wavered is like a wave of the sea driven the wind and toss, for let that man think that he shall not receive anything from the Lord. Uh -huh. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A man that is not rooted and grounded in God's church mm -hmm. does not know enough about God to believe him without wavering. And he's certainly not pleasing God, praise the name of the Lord, and he's not working uh, with God. God, uh, 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 God uh, I think, greatest desire is that we believe him. Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, he said, the works that I do yeah. shall he do also, if he what? Believe. Absolutely. See? So uh, we're, we're, called, we're called to believe. In fact, uh, we hear him talking in Mark, he says, and these signs shall follow them that believe, 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 believe. <laughs> you have to believe. Mm -hmm that God does not lie. Mm -hmm. He cannot lie. That's right. And if he says, I'm coming back to receive you unto myself, who is he coming back for? He's coming back for the born again believer. Mm -hmm. That's right. He's coming back for the church. That's right. He's coming back for those that have withstood the test of times and did not waver in their faith. In Mark 11 24, mm -hmm. the record says to you, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray. What do you desire? I desire to be the church. I desire to operate in the power and the authority of God. Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. He's not talking about cars and, and houses and money here. He's talking about having a desire to be a witness of the kingdom, being sons of the most high God, 
having a desire to go back with him when he returns. Do you believe tonight? In Matthew 7, verse 7 through 8, listen to the record. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. For everyone that acts it, receive it, and he that seek it, find it. And to him that knock it, it shall be open. What's going to be open to me? The power that has been given to the church, the keys of the kingdom, that we might be sons of the Most High God. Yeah, yeah, and the, and the Bible goes on to say, Fear not, little flock, for it gives you a father great pre uh, pleasure to give you the keys to the kingdom, yes. to give you the Holy Ghost. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, the Holy Ghost is the power to live right. It's the power, the witness, the love, the peace, the prosperity, the protection of the Most High God. In John 16 and 24, listen to the record. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Come on now. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Some people don't ask because they don't believe that God can, that God will, that God wants to. My beloved, yes, he does. He wants to change your mind about the lies and the deceptive spirit that the enemy has brought into your life. He wants you to fully understand that he loved you enough that he died and gave his life on Calvary, rose again from the dead, All right. brought the keys of the kingdom and says, behold, I give you the keys of the kingdom and whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. This is your miracle, your blessing that God desires for you. Church got power. Yeah, and praise the name of the Lord. And James 4 picks it up and says, you have not because you ask not. <laughs> Absolutely. In Matthew 9, verse 28 through 29, and after Jesus has entered into the house, the blind man came to him. And Jesus says to him, do you believe that I'm able to do this? God is asking you tonight, do you believe I'm able to do what it is that you need done in your life? He answered and said, yes, Lord. Then he touched the eyes and said, according to the faith, mm -hmm. will it be to you? See, a lot of people talk a lot of stuff and they say they have a lot of faith, but when it comes down to God saying, well, if you believe, it's gonna happen. Well, if it don't happen, you gotta go back and check your faith. And All there's right. nothing wrong with realizing that you don't have the faith you thought you had, but you, you gotta go back to the church so you can hear the word because faith coming by hearing and hearing the word of God. The church has power. Do you have your power? Mm -hmm. You got 30 seconds. Yeah, and it's not God. Uh, 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 God doesn't have any a problem with doing what he says he do. So if it don't happen, watch this here. It's not God's problem. It's your problem. Absolutely. <laughs> God loves you. And God cares for you. And he wants to show you that he is still your deliverer, your healer, your way maker, your provider, your miracle worker, mm -hmm. but you got to come and hear the word of God. All right. You can join either one of us in our services. Yeah. They are on the screen for a life changing experience. We are the men of integrity and we are praying for your miracle. Out of your bed, out of your, 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 out